Now I'm doing this because I want to show you all what I'm all about. I like doing these workout videos. I like showing you what I like to do outside of making comic book YouTube videos. Working out and doing jujitsu is a major part of my life and I want to show you all. I want to document my journey throughout my whole life. I want to show you my whole transformation of this whole working out process. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I started off as a power lifter. I don't know if you all know this, but I'll just tell you my origin story basically. So I started off as a golfer when I was very young. Uh, I was golfing for a very long time. I think I started golfing when I was two years old and I went all the way until I was 11 years old and then I started to get a little frustrated with golf. It was a lot of work and there's a big truck coming so I'm scared. But I'm just gonna say that golf really wore me down. Like I would get home from school every day at three o'clock and then I would practice golf until it was dark outside. And then I would do that. And it just got a lot on me. It was so much work. It was just a lot. So basically, in 2015, I took that whole year off. I took 2015 off to figure out what I wanted to do. Decide what I wanted to do in my life. So I think at that time, I was 10 years old. And in that year, I saw my brother started wrestling. And he did that one year by himself. And then I, I wanted to give it a try. So I... So I went, I gave it a try, and I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. So I decided to, that I wanted to be a wrestler. So I did that. The first year I started wrestling, I won the Wrestler of the Year award. And I was really happy about that. I don't know how I did it, but it was crazy. It meant a lot to me, and it really showed that I was good at this stuff. Then, soon after that, my dad said, If you want to be a good wrestler, you have to start working out. So I went to the gym. I didn't know anything I was doing. And I just started lifting weights. We would watch these videos on how people do these exercises. And I would just watch and try and learn what they're doing. And one time, since I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know if you're going to like this story. But I was at the gym one time and I was doing dumbbell incline press. And I got to like 8. And it was a 25 pound weight. And then I got to 9. And it slipped out of my hand and dropped on my head. Because I really didn't know what good form was. I didn't know how to do those exercises the right way. But now I'm learning, having a lot of fun working out. And now I, now I want to show you that what I'm doing. I want to show you the workouts that I'm doing. Now I'm with my new coach, Joe Patch. But I'm skipping a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to get into the, how I got into powerlifting. Wrestling led into working out, like I said. And that really led into becoming a powerlifter. I realized that it was a lot of fun. But... It, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of determination, and I just really enjoyed working out. I love the pain. I love the hard work that goes into it. It's a lot of fun. And powerlifting is a thing I did for four years. I started that in 2016, and I just ended this year. I ended, I think, this July, this past July. Yeah, and over that whole time, I competed four times. And I set 19 Connecticut records and two American records. One was in the deadlift for 223 pounds. And the other was for my total. I don't remember what my total was. But I just remember that I got an American record for a total. So I was really happy about that. That was a huge goal of mine. To get an American record and become one of the record holders in America. That was one of the best times of my life. I really enjoyed Oh wait, I just realized I'm on the wrong side of the road. I'm going to go over there when this car passes. Um, but working out is so fun. I really enjoy it. Cross the street. <laughs> but, like I said, I set those records and I really enjoyed it. I did a little bit of hour lifting after that. And then I realized that, like, it got a little boring. Because working out on power lifting, you take, like, such a long breaks in that. And it kind of gets annoying. But you're doing really heavy weight, which is always fun when you're lifting these really heavy weights. So then I saw my coach, well, I, I didn't actually know who he was, I just saw him working out. And I was like, that stuff looks pretty cool, I would like to do that. And I knew he was doing bodybuilding because I knew, I saw the w way he was doing his exercises, he would be really going really slow and doing really high reps. And I was like, now that looks awesome. And I decided right then and there, that's what I wanted to do. 
and this was around August, beginning of August this year. So I really wanted to do that. This is my first time seeing him in the gym. And the first day of that, I texted the owner of the gym. I asked him who that guy was and if he was a coach. And he, the coach, or the owner of my gym, Matt Mills, said his name was Joe Patch. And he, yes, he is a coach for NBS Training Systems. You can check him out on Instagram if you're in the area and you want to work out with him. I highly recommend it to you. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met. He's an awesome person. It's been a lot of fun so far. But I'm just going to continue showing you some workouts with me and him. I feel like I'm going to be with him for a very long time. I'm going to definitely put on some mass working with him. I'm eating a lot better than I did before. So that's another thing. If you watch one of these first videos I did about my, uh, like my talking about my origin story, I guess you would say. I had an eating disorder for the longest time, and I don't know why I had it. Like, I never wanted to eat anything. It was just so, it was a weird, hard time for me. My parents knew that it was hard for me, but they always wanted me to eat. They didn't want me to get sick and be anorexic. So they always forced me to eat food, even when I didn't want to. They would just tell me, they'd be like, Will, you need to eat this or you're not going to become well. So I did what they said. I tried. But I never wanted to eat anything. I Sometimes I would literally hide food and wait until they left so I could throw it away. I never wanted to eat anything. But then I saw Stan Efforting on July 9th, 2020. And that's a day I'll never forget. Because that day is when my eating disorder ended. <sighs> Stan Efforting motivated me to eat more better food. I wasn't eating the right type of food when I had that problem. Then he said, eat steak, eat white rice. So then I started it, and I immediately fell in love with eating. It was the weirdest thing. Now I'm eating all the time, and since March, I've put on 30 pounds. I was 100 pounds on, at the beginning of March, and now it's October, and I'm 130 pounds. That was my goal. I wanted to be 130 pounds by December, so I could wrestle at 132. But I'm 130, so I'm just going to keep putting on more mass. I'm going to get stronger. And I'm definitely going to keep working hard. But now, when I met Joe and I met Stan Efferding, they all said that I need to be eating six meals a day. So, coming from a kid who never wanted to eat food, I was like, I don't, I don't think that's possible. That's going to be one of the hardest things for me. And I, I didn't know what to do. But, I gave it a try one day. And it was hard the first couple weeks. I never wanted to eat anything, like I said, a bunch of times. Having six meals a day was something I wasn't used to and it was definitely something I had to get used to in order to grow, in order to put on muscle and put on size. So I kept doing it. I had six meals a day like my coach and Stan Efferding said. I would have like a couple eggs for breakfast, I'd have a carb, and then I had some fruit. And then two hours after that I would probably have a protein shake. Two after hours after that I would have lunch. And then it's like every two hours you would eat something. So after I did that for like two or three weeks, every two hours I was hungry. And that's the crazy thing. When you're getting food like that and you're eating six meals a day like that and you're having something to eat every two hours, I think your body just gets used to it. You know, something that I had to get used to. So now I'm hungry. Every two hours, every two hours I'm having something to eat. I'm having a protein shake. I'm having something to fuel my body, use it as energy. And that's one of the things I'm so grateful about. I want to eat now, and it's one of those best things that happened to me. So I feel if I didn't have those six meals a day, if I didn't see Stan Efforting, if I didn't meet my coach who changed my whole diet around, just because they motivated me and they were inspired me, I would definitely would have not put on the weight I did and put on the size I did. So I'm really, really grateful and I'm really thankful for them. Now I'm going to be talking about working with Joe from NBS Training Systems. He's now become one of my best friends. He's an awesome coach. And, I, and like I said, I'm going to be with him for a very long time. I've done exercises I've never done before. And it's one of those things I really enjoy doing. Like, according, like when I was doing powerlifting, I would do a set. And then I'd have like a 10 minute break in between. And then I'd do my second set. This is like 30 minute second break, but it's it's awesome. You get the blood flowing. 
and he said in a in a year or so you're gonna have a great foundation you're gonna be really big and you're gonna have one of the best foundations of a kid out there going to that point i don't see like any kids working out but i think it's like two seniors that are in my school that work out and then no one else like actually touches weights but it's crazy i'm gonna work hard and become one of the best out there i'm really looking forward to putting on more size because i hate being called this skinny small kid all the time i hate that it's not something i like so in a year from now i'm definitely gonna look a lot different than i do right now i can already tell that i've put on a lot of size than compared to march when i was 100 pounds and i look way bigger i look way more defined and it's awesome it wouldn't be possible without my coach who's actually teaching me how to do these things i'm gonna turn around so it's one of those things that i'm very happy about but now talking about the youtube videos that i do i gotta hurry up the battery's about to die but i'm just gonna say that these videos I put out, they mean so much to me, and I want them to get a lot of views, and I hope that they will get a lot of views. I put one out once a week, and they don't get that many views. I don't know why. They only get around 80 views. People, we have 1,200 and something subscribers, and my videos only get 80 views. I'm doing something wrong. So I'm definitely going to incorporate these vlog type of videos more often. I want to try and get more comfortable talking in front of the camera. Like, right now, I'm just, I'm just out in the public. There's no one around here. So I'm perfectly fine. But if there's people, I get nervous, I clam up, and I'm not sure what to do. But that's something I definitely got to work on. I got to get comfortable talking in front of the camera so I can bring you all very good content. I'm going to be doing this for a very long time. I'm going to be on YouTube for a very long time. I hope to make a career out of this. I want to be well-known. I want everyone to hear my story. I want them... To know where I came from and where I've gotten to. And I want to show people that it's possible. If you're in a rough spot in your life. And you want to become better. You can work hard. You can encourage yourself. And you have people that want to help you get to that place. This is why I started the comic book YouTube channel. I wanted more kids to read comic books. And so far I've gotten more people reading comic books. And they've never even heard of comic books before. And I'm so happy about that. But now I want to get more people working out, getting people to hear my story. I want to hear other people's story. If you have a story that you were some somewhere and you got out of it, I want to hear that. I want to know what you have. Like I said, I'm just going to keep doing YouTube. I'm going to get better. I'm going to show you all my workout routines. I'm going to show you what I do in my life. I'm going to show you like days in the life of Will. I'm going to show you my jujitsu. I'm going to show you my whole transformation. I'm going to show you my whole journey. I hope you all enjoy this. I'm going to finish up my walk. We're going to have a snack. I'm hungry, you know. But I really do hope you guys enjoy the style video. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Welcome back, everyone. Once again, we're at Lightning Fitness, the strongest gym in New England. Today is a push day, so it's mostly focusing on shoulders, and then we're going to add some chest and triceps as well into the workout. So the first exercise that we have on the agenda today is dumbbell military presses. And if you don't know, shoulders are one of the hardest body parts for me to train because they're not the strongest muscle I have on my body, so I'm definitely trying to make it a stronger muscle. And this is one of the hardest shoulder exercises for me out there. Uh, right here is like the hardest uh, rep of the whole set, really struggling to get that last rep. So up next we have barbell behind the head presses and this is another exercise where we're going to failure on the last rep. Every set, every exercise that we do, we always go to failure on the last set because we really want to exhaust that muscle, make sure it's growing, make sure the muscle fibers are tearing and regrowing new ones. So I do want to point out something Joe was telling me is that sometimes my reps aren't going all the way down and touching my traps like they should be. Sometimes they go an inch or two above and I really got to work on that and sometimes the bar is not straight, it's sometimes tilted to one side. This is a really complicated movement to get down 
and I'm really working hard to better this exercise. This is an exercise I've never done before um, until I started working with Joe and I actually really like it. It's one of those exercises that I've never done and it's one of those I really feel burning all the time. Up next we have seated machine lateral raises. This is another exercise I haven't really done much of before. I usually use dumbbells for lateral raises, but I like this way better than using dumbbells. You're really trying to slow the movement down, pausing at the top and then slowly bringing it down, waiting for those pegs to drop and stable themselves. And if you pay close attention, you can see my coach Joe looking at my shoulders, knowing, being jealous that my shoulders in a couple years will be way bigger than his. Up next, we have seated machine face pulls. This is an exercise that works your delts. I've never actually done this before. I usually do this exercise standing up, but I like this a lot better than standing because this you just sit down and then you pull the rope to your head and it really contracts your muscles and it guarantees that it's gonna be growing. If you do decide to do this exercise, make sure that you go really slow on the way back down and make sure that it touches your head every time because if it doesn't touch your head, then it doesn't count as a rep. This is one of the few exercises where I can do so many partial reps guaranteeing that my muscles are gonna be growing. And it's always important that you're wearing a belt so that you can keep a strong core and a strong base while executing these exercises. One thing I do want to say is that if you're brand new to working out, don't jump right into doing heavy weights. Start light, get the movements down, get the technique down so you have good form and you're not going to injure yourself. A lot of times I do 10 reps with a lighter weight and then I do 8 reps with a heavier weight and then I do my AMRAP for as many reps as I can. And the sets that you see are usually my AMRAPs. And AMRAP means as many reps as possible, so just keep in mind that you don't always have to go heavy because if you're new and you go heavy right away, that's a one way that you can injure yourself. Up next we have machine flies for your chest. I really like this exercise. Uh, if you decide to do this exercise at your gym and you have this machine, don't be afraid to ask for someone to help lift up one side like Joe just did. Uh, don't be that guy that thinks that you can always do it and the weights are nothing because it really helps and you'll be able to get more reps in the long run because you're not exhausting yourself right in the beginning just to unload the weight. When doing this exercise, make sure to squeeze at the top and bring the weights down very slowly or slow as you can. Make sure that you feel your chest stretching as much as it can. Feel the burn in your chest. Make sure the blood's flowing and getting that good pump and making sure that your chest is growing. Now this is one of the reasons why I want the gym music to be a little quieter than it is because they always blast the music. And I want people to be understanding and hearing what Joe is saying to me, how he's pushing me through the exercise, through the workout. He's like yelling at me, motivating me to get more reps, trying harder, and trying to get the growth that I need to get. And don't get me wrong, I do love the music in my gym. It really gets everyone fired up and it's cranking really loud. But these are the times like I wish I could turn it down so that people can understand what people are saying so that we don't get copywritten and our channel gets taken down.
Up next, we have flat bench dumbbell presses, and don't you love that view? Just kidding, that's a little weird. But this exercise is one I haven't done before, and I like it on the rack. It's just like you're unracking a barbell, but you have dumbbells. And the little clips on the sides are like a pound and a quarter each, so it adds like... Because I have 35, so it's probably like 37 pounds. This is an exercise where you want to go slow down and go as deep as you can, touching your chest. Make sure that you touch so that you know you're getting the full range of motion. Squeeze at the top, and then repeat the exercise. If you look in the background, you'll see an old man in his natural habitat on his second exercise while I'm on my sixth exercise. So what does that tell you? It tells you that old people take a very long time to get things done. So the last exercise that we have on the list today is dumbbell overhead tricep extensions. Uh, this is an exercise I've done before, but I usually have done it standing uh, so that I can build a stronger base, but sitting makes it way more focused on your triceps, and I love that. Now in a couple seconds, you're going to see Joe take the weight away from me. It was a little too heavy, and I wasn't executing the exercise perfectly. So I dropped in weight and did more reps. Moving on to day number two. So today at Jiu Jitsu we were learning a self defense uh, movement and I just have perfect boxing technique so didn't you like how I move my feet like that because I thought I was pretty cool. But we're doing a headlock escape so you're going to turn towards the person, you're going to crouch down, you're going to reach under the leg and then you're going to do a backwards roll and end up onto the side and then you're going to get out of the headlock by pushing down on his head and pushing towards him, releasing and getting in that arm bar. All right, so now we're grappling, and this is one of my best friends. This is Emily from Jiu Jitsu, and she's been doing this for a very long time. She's going to be a black belt when she's very young. She's been my friend ever since I joined the Jiu Jitsu Academy, and we always have really great roles. I feel like that we're the same, like, technical-wise, and we always have, like, the best matches together, and it's a lot of fun. We always do this thing where we put each other's knee on each other's stomach, and then we just squeeze as hard as we can, trying to do it harder than the other person. And that really makes the other person very mad. As you can see, when we're grappling, we're very constant, we flow very well, and that's just because we've had a lot of experience with jiu-jitsu. I've been here for four years. I'm not sure how many years Emily's been a part of jiu-jitsu, but if you get in a position, don't be afraid to tap. Like right here, I'm able to get out, but if I wasn't able to get out, you just tap because you don't want to injure yourself when you're just practicing. Emily also competes in a lot of tournaments. She's placed a lot. She's one of a lot of the tournaments, and she's also a really good competitor. I've competed in two or three or four uh, tournaments. I'm not sure how many, but I've done like second, third, and my first tournament I competed in, I won. But the third tournament I will never forget is because I was a white belt and I had to go against a person who was four belts higher than me. I was just doing points. I wasn't submitting the people. And he, first thing he gets in there, he starts choking me. And I, just because I haven't been around jiu-jitsu very long, I didn't know what to do. And the ref didn't stop. So it was a weird time and the coaches had to get in and do something about it. And a great thing that you should do is sign up for jiu-jitsu, see if you like it. It's a great way to help if you're being bullied. It tells you a lot. It gives you, it makes you very humble and it just makes you an all-around great person. It teaches you a lot about self-defense and how to survive in the real world. Jiu-jitsu is also a great confidence builder and after you do it for a while, you just want to keep going back and learning new things. 
You can join jujitsu at any age, young or old. If you look in the background, you'll see a person in their 60s. You don't have to always go full blast. Jujitsu is a great way to cleanse your mind, body, and soul. Are you all ready for this? Just keep watching. Crazy feats of strength featuring Will the Beast from Hero and the Kid. Ah! With a lift and a takedown and a slam. That's two points right there. And not long after that glorious takedown, I got into a triangle and I had to tap out because I cho got choked. But the great thing about this jujitsu community is that when someone gets tapped out, no one gets mad. You just get back up and then you start the next round. The move I'm about to go for is called an ankle lock, and this is one of the hardest moves for me to get down. You have to have your hand in the exact right place. You have to have the blade of your hand on their Achilles tendon just to get it in the perfect place. We finished in a tie. Leave your egos at the door. This is just about learning and growing. I want to give a big thank you for Emily for doing this part of the video. It means a lot to me. Uh, you'll definitely be seeing more of Emily because she's like one of my best friends and she's a really great training partner. So this is not the end of seeing jujitsu. You're going to see a lot more of it. Now you're probably wondering who this curly-headed guy is, and this is Rich McKeegan. He's a black belt at my academy. He's one of my best friends. He's very, very nice to me. He's always been there for me and my dad, and we always have the best roles. I tap him out all the time just because, you know, I'm way better than all the black belts there. It's always fun when he's teaching me these new moves I never even see. He just sees them all the time, and it's great learning new things. And the great thing about rolling with a black belt is when they see something that you don't, they'll stop and tell you to do that so you learn it. And that's a great thing about jujitsu. Please go to Instagram and type up black belts for butterflies. And I want to give a big thanks to Rich McKeegan for doing this. Alright, back home. So I'm going to be wrapping up the video here. But before I wrap up the video, I'm going to show you what I usually have for a snack. Uh, this is like my one of the things I have for a snack sometimes. Usually I'll just have a protein shake and some carbs. Uh, but I'm going to show you what I got. So we'll have two eggs. And then I'll have some chicken. Make your chicken to last for like a whole week. So usually we'll have, we'll have three ounces of chicken. And the eggs are going to be over easy. So two eggs, three ounces of chicken. And if you all don't know, I make my own food. So... There you go. Alright, so we got three ounces of chicken. We got two over easy eggs. I really did hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, one of those vlogs I'm doing for the first time. It's definitely something I have to get used to talking in front of the camera. Uh, well, I'm used to it talking in our house, but out in the public, I gotta get used to that. But if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below or text me on Instagram at willthebeast 230 I'll try and answer all your questions if you guys have any. So we got our chicken. And usually I'll just scissor it. <laughs> but we'll just cut it up. Chicken right here. And if you guys are new to like working out and dieting, this you can always ask me and my dad a question. We'll always be happy to answer it. We want to get as much people as we can into the fitness world. And the more the better. And this is a zero calorie spray for one four second. And I'm from my boy back from my boy Max tuning. Zero. 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 Zero 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 zero. And throw the chicken on there. Alright, let's see if I can do this one handed. Yeah. Oh well. That was not good. Alright, so the food's cooking. It's almost done. We got some chicken and we got an over easy. Well, we got two. I messed up on the first one. So we got one and a half. 
over easy eggs. I don't know how to say that, but we got two eggs there. One came out good, one came out terribly. Uh, this will be done. I'll show you what it's like at the end. Alright, so the food's all done. The food's all done, so we're going to take it out now. Alright, I think it came out pretty good. We got some eggs and we got some chicken. Alright, so that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. So please, subscribe to Hero and the Kid if you're not subscribed already. We put out a lot of great content. We work really hard at it. We hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and s turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. I'm starving. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat this up. I hope you all have a great day. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.